Happy Friday, everybody. Josh here on The Wrong Lead. Another episode of You Gotta Be Shot Tinning Me. Joined, as always, by Matt Carlson. Matt, we got a lot to talk about this week. Uh, uh, not Most of it not horse racing. Uh, uh, first of all, you got to tell me, how was last epoch? Uh, it's all right. The servers are, uh, you know, I think they've, they've spread enough, uh, you know, fire extinguisher fluid and whatever <laughs> PFAS on them to, you know, put the fires out and you can actually connect and play. You know, maybe that's because two thirds of the, you know, people who bought it have gotten away from it. <laughs> they couldn't connect. So, you know, it's kind of normalized, but it's, it's fun. You know, I'm a, I'm an action RPG junkie. You know, it's nothing like horse gambling and video game gambling just to kind of keep your brain constantly firing on all cylinders so uh it's it's fun though you know i think it's i'm a big like path of exile player for anyone who's played those um it's a lot simpler than that you know you don't need to be looking up build guides and wondering why the hell your character sucks the entire time it's kind of like everything's viable so i've been having fun with it but it's mindless you know go pick a build hack some things see what drops rinse and repeat so that could be fun yeah, uh, I still see the Steam reviews are still uh, still mixed. It seems like it's gotten better the last couple of days. So hopefully, with the with the servers uh, being fixed, maybe people will stop uh, stop being salty. Um, I've actually been playing another game that that suffered a very similar fate uh, to what you're talking about uh, in Hell Divers Two. Um, so I've been playing that with uh, with Caleb um, and uh, and Evil Bob Dole. And uh, yeah, we, we've been we've been rolling as a three stack for the most part, and uh, it's fun. It's 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 very mindless, like you said uh, with uh, Last Epoch. Um, yeah, it's just you know, I, I was kind of laughing because you know I I saw the premise of it and I saw um, I don't know just like kind of like the structure of it and like there's not really. There's no competitive aspect to it, right? And you know, our our main game is League of Legends, and which is a, a very competitive game, a uh, very tilting game, uh, much like horse racing. And you know, sometimes like I feel like, oh well, we don't have that. You know, you don't have that competitiveness to to go like like how how is this going to stick around? But no, we've been having a we've been having a blast, just you know, blowing up mach- robots and blowing up aliens and stuff and. Um, yeah, it's 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 really fun. It's uh, it's one to, it's one to check out. I I will say that it's a tough one. I think to play solo. Um, I think like you said, ARPGs are a little bit more friendly towards the solo player. I mean, I still I still really really like Diablo Four. Um, you know, I, I wasn't super excited about this last season, so I've uh, I, I haven't played. But uh, the season before was really great. And uh, from what I've heard is it seems like the team, there's like two teams and they alternate seasons. So I'm guessing that next season will be good. Uh, so we'll we'll see. We'll wait for that to come out. And, you know, I, I, I feel like people forget Diablo 2 and, and Diablo 3, I think, uh, to a lesser extent. I know that people weren't as, as, as high on Diablo 3. But... Diablo 2 especially didn't really pick up until the expansion came out. Like, yeah, like it was fun. It was good. And but once that expansion came out and, and they had it out for a bit, that's when Diablo 2, I think, really became Diablo 2. So um, you know, I, I know this isn't the same blizzard of of back then or even of, you know, peak Overwatch, but um I think they'll get it right. I think they'll they'll, they'll get it back. I mean, I, honestly, the the campaign was really fun, um, and I, I just think, you know, uh, they didn't plan so well. I think for after, you know, what what players are going to do after the campaign very well, and uh, I guess for an ARPG, that's kind of a big deal. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, it happens. I think with all of them, you're right. Right, like Path of Exile is the same way. That game's been out for. I want to say 15 years now even right and same sort of thing right i mean they add new content every season but it's always layered right they just add and add and add and you know that game's incredibly grindy now because they never take anything away but yeah to your point i think every year because you kind of follows that arc of it takes you know five six seven eight years to get going and people just want something immediate um 
and it doesn't work that way right and so you know i'm i'm with you i have diablo 4 sitting in the backlog i haven't really played it because i don't think there's much to do in it right now but i'm sure i'll come back to it i'm sure they'll they'll keep adding and adding and build on it and eventually it'll be you know maybe worth it even diablo 3 was right i mean at the end of it people hated that game and 10 years into it it was fun because they just said hey go nuts you know mm -hmm. build whatever you want become super overpowered and you know pick up some loot yeah. See what the money machine spits out. <laughs> it's fun. It's mindless, right? I mean, just go hack, pick stuff up, do it over. So. Yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, obviously coming back, coming back to, I think, our, our more normal topic, which is beer, uh, you did send me a picture from, uh, was that was that Total Wine? That you were at? Total Wine. Yeah. I was, like, I was like, I think I recognize those. Those look like Total Wine uh, uh, labels, uh, you know, and, and you were showing the... the uh, the variety of, of Bourbon County stouts. Um, funny enough, I uh, I went light tonight. Uh, I have a, uh, a Spotted Cow, which uh, if you are from the Midwest, um, or the North Midwest, I don't know, Wisconsin, uh, Illinois, Minnesota area, you, you're very familiar with this brewery. It's uh, Minnesota, or um, Wisconsin only, New Glarus. Um, and uh, this is just their cream ale. Uh, which is just an easy drinking. It's a beer that tastes like beer. You know, it's it's just nice, easy drinking. Uh, it's an ale, but it's basically um, the same like mash bill as like a you know light lager would be. It's just with an ale yeast, so it's got a little bit more body to it. It's it's um, it's a little bit hazier, you know. It's not like it's not like a super clear beer, like you know, if you were drinking or like the Michelob Ultra I had earlier. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's something something nice and uh, and easy. Uh, I, I'll I'll get back to the barrel aged stouts uh, soon enough, I'm sure. Uh, what do you got over there, Matt? Yeah, I'm drinking. Uh, I think I've talked about New England Road before. Um, quasi local to me. Uh, I'm drinking their uh, their Super Knot, which I think is their. Uh, uh, I think it's their all mosaic IPA. I mean, I think mm. I talked about them. They're big on brewing kind of those IPAs that tasted like IPAs did 15 years ago. And mm -hmm. They haven't changed much, right? They were kind of the first ones to be like, okay, we're going to brew an all citra IPA and an all mosaic IPA. Yep. So, um, you know, just good, cheap. It was, I think it was 850 for a six pack of 12 ounce cans. That's so a I'm, deal. You know, uh, right? I mean, you can't beat it. So it's good beer. It's, you know, it's nothing, no frills. And, this uh, uh, This beer I'm drinking uh I, I was free to me uh my wife did a ton of work for this uh shout out to uh, my wife who last weekend had to babysit uh my, her brother so my brother-in-law and sister-in-law's uh three children while they went out for like i think it was like a weekend they were out for like two nights so my wife was there friday saturday and came back sunday and uh they went up to michigan or uh wisconsin for a couple nights and they brought her back two 12 packs of beer uh so i am drinking the fruits of her labor uh shout out to my wife uh for uh you know for for bringing this beer back so but That's uh free beer you know exactly like to you say with that if somebody you know if somebody put a beer in front of me no matter what it was i would drink it if the price was right exactly so put a piece of cake in front of me doesn't matter what it is free i beer. i probably would too i i think at, at a certain point i should have uh should have learned to say no to the free cake, but hey, here we are. Uh, but you know what else is free is uh, this analysis that we're going to have for this uh, this late pick three here at Sha Tin. Um, oh, speaking of afford, like you were talking about that affordable beer, I, I got to get this off my chest. I ordered a pizza tonight, and it was sixty dollars. It was sixty dollars with delivery and tip. What is going on, man? Now, granted, it was oh, Lou, it was Lou Malinati's, right? It was a large it pizza. Was, it was deep dish, right? It was deep dish, that's right? Like, yeah. That's like eight pizzas in one. Yeah, <laughs> but but man, like even like the other day, I got thin crust delivered, and I think it was probably like a thirty. I think it was like a thirty dollar pizza. Yeah. And I'm just like, man, like I remember when these were like half that price, and that wasn't that long ago. But man, you know, luckily, uh, you know. That in, inflation's killing us over here, but hey, the 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 bet minimum uh, on the on this late pick three is still twenty cents uh, on most AEW, so that hasn't gone. Like you're making money. <laughs> you can't afford not to play. Um, 
But uh, we're gonna start with uh, with a five furlong uh, straight here. We're gonna be going a uh, thousand meters. Uh, it looks like they are on the B plus two track uh, this night, so rails are out a little bit. Um, and you know, I landed on two horses in this spot. Um, the five Invincible Sage uh, is probably my top pick in here. Um, had a very good run of form coming into um, into class two. Uh, you know, had won, won two straight, jumped into class two, won another one, and then they went straight into group three company and finished second uh, by by a length. Uh, you know, but um, kind of came back down into into a group two race. And for some reason, they decided to to go that extra furlong. Uh, the 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 public was not interested at all in this horse. This horse went off at sixteen to one when, you know, was going off at much shorter prices before then, um, and now is back. I think doing what he wants to do, uh, going that that thousand meters, um, and, and I think that he's probably going to be your top pick in this spot. Um, you know, uh, you got a horse. Uh, uh, the four uh, galaxy patch uh, who um, is probably going to be your favorite if I had to guess. Um, and this is a horse that I think is not doing something it wants to do, which is go five furlongs. Um, so, you know, it, it's interesting to see what, what the, what they're thinking with this four, but I think this is, this is a, a great time to, to, to kind of fade this for my guess is invincible sage will probably be your second choice uh maybe even maybe third choice i mean he's going to be he's not going to be some amazing prize here but uh, i think he's kind of your most likely winner um and, and an alternative i have uh for everybody is the one uh duke way and this is one where i think you know you kind of got to uh you kind of got to like kind of got to look at what he's been running against and he's just been way over his head the last four or five races. I mean, he was in group ones, group threes, you know, class one. And, you know, just, I don't know, he, he just wasn't, just, just wasn't it. But, you know, in that group three where, uh, where he was going a thousand meters, um, it, it seemed like he was at least in, I guess, in, in at least similar company, right? He finished fifth, uh, fifth by three lengths. Um, and, I think even this, uh, you know, this uh, group of horses he's going against is going to be much, much uh, softer than even that field. So I expect some improvement here. I mean, obviously, this is the, the class dropper. Um, hasn't won in a bit. Um, but, you know, does have two wins at this class. Does have three wins at this distance. Um, this is probably... Um, you know, he, yeah, he's won three out of nine races going this distance. He, I don't, I, he's been six of nine uh, on the board. So, I, I think that he's going to get back to something he wants to do here. Um, and I, I think, uh, you know, he, maybe maybe he gets a little lost on the board just because people are going to see kind of that that muddy form and they're going to see the high weight and and maybe they're going to try and uh, and go somewhere else. But you do get the, at least the five pound allowance here uh, for the bug. So, um, I, I don't think he's going to be you know, carrying that much weight, uh, more than the rest of the field. So I'm just going to go two horses here. I got the one and the five, uh, Matt, where did you land? Yeah, I, I think I saw it similar to you. I guess one thing that I tend to like about, or one thing I tend to look for in these, uh, straight races. And I think this is the first like thousand meter race we are talking about. So just a, a little bit about how I like to cap them. I tend to think the outside rail is good, right? The stand side rail. And normally you see horses running towards the, you know, the center of the track right that inside rail you don't want to lose ground around turns so the closer you are to that one draw the better off you are i tend to think it's the opposite for five furlongs right and you always see these horses kind of gravitate towards that outside rail because no one runs there right that's the good ground because it's it's never been run on right no race runs there um so i tend to think that for these the outside draws tend to be better and so the couple things I look for, right, are one, horses that are drawn there, the further, you know, if you have the 14 draw, I tend to think it's better in this case than it is the one draw because you're in the middle of that track. Um, so I look for horses that have that draw or last time we're running against that in a bad draw. So if you had the one draw last time, you you know, you probably were up against it if you were running in the middle of the track unless you cleared. Um, and so, you know, a couple of horses that stuck out to me, I think the five, like you said, right, Invincible Sage, um, that race two back in the one post, you know, that horse is running down the center of the track the whole time. So I don't think it ever gets to that good ground. 
and it still ran on well, right? I mean, that's a that's a Group Three race. Obviously, it was getting a lot of weight, but I think that effort was impressive. Um, that's a very forward track, and it was still trying to close in in a bad ground. That to me indicates that five has a lot of ability. And if you know you get a jockey upgrade in, in Hugh Bowman, I think Bowman's really good at five furlongs. Personally, I think he knows where the good ground is, and he can get that more than Alexi Bedell does. So, um, you know, I, I think for that reason, yeah, I'm, I'm totally on board with the five. Um, I saw a Galaxy Patch the same way you did. I'm not sure why they're running at 1,000 meters. I love Galaxy Patch as a horse, but not at five furlongs, so I'm fending the fade here because uh, I think it, it might take too much money, and even if it doesn't, um, you know, eh, I, I just kind of wanted to take a wait and see. I think it'll I think it'll be shorter than it, it would need to be to convince me to bet it here. Um, the only other horse that I liked, and, and I'll say liked with, you know, kind of quotes, air quotes <laughs> on it, um, you know me. I, I love trying to find horses that really don't look good and have a ton of excuses and then bet them anyway. And the one that stuck out to me then was the eight nervous witness. Um, you know, like I mentioned, I think outside draws are good. It gets the furthest outside draw, I believe in this race, or at least an outside draw. It has really speed. So it's going to be getting the good ground. Um, if you read the comments, they're not really inspiring here. It's obviously run once. It ran in October. The comment line on it just came up lame after the race. Hmm. That's coming off another effort back last May where the comment was came up lame after the race. So you're having a horse that came up lame the last two times it's run. Um, why the hell would I bet that horse? Uh, I think I've talked about it before. I think in Hong Kong you end up it's opposite of what I would normally treat in domestic racing. right? I don't think they let these horses run unless they are absolutely convinced that they are ready to go and they're convinced that there are no problems with that. Um, so to me, if you can get a price on a horse that, you know, has some injury concerns, but has been on the bench and then trialed back well and shown that it can run at, you know, sufficient speed to prove that it doesn't have a medical issue. I think that veterinary staff won't let it run unless it's, they're convinced that it will run in its top form. And I think it's top form, um, you know, wants the distance, likes the low weight, gets the ideal draw. And to me, that's a horse that I think you can get a lot of value on because of that. Um, and something that I'm going to go to in the sequence just because of that, right? Um, I think, you know, in this case, I will use that to an advantage and say, yeah, if the horse is lame again, it's lame and it's probably going to be forced to retire. <laughs> but if it's not, you're going to get a lot of, you know, you're going to get some good money on it. So that's the chance I'm going to take on the eight nervous witness. Um, but probably think that this is the fives race to lose just like you do. So. Uh, Speed Pro really likes some of those back races on the eight. Um, if you look at, at Speed Pro, um, the eight has got the fastest uh, race at this distance uh, in the last 12 months in this field next to the two, adios, and has got the best figure in the last uh last 12 months same with with the two audios uh, on on speed pro um but yeah the last couple efforts just just aren't aren't there aren't aren't fast enough uh for um for this uh well actually no the the one duke way has got uh got a faster figure but um but at the distance he he's got a 112 uh and i don't know which race it was but it was sometime in the past year so you know, I I think you I think you're right. He's got back races that fit there, but or that are there. But like, you know, is the is the horse fit? Is you know, uh, how is he going to respond first off? Uh, first off, the layoff again. Um, but but I think you're going to get you're going to get a price. I mean, if you look at it, the last time two times he came out uh, after coming out lame, coming up lame. I mean, they still bet him. So yeah, I you know, I I mean. Maybe maybe he loses a little bit of faith here, and maybe you're getting you'll get like you know twelve fifteen to one, um, and you know now we're talking, you know. So yeah, I, I don't hate it. So congratulations to uh, the to Galaxy Patch for uh, for winning this race and uh, yeah, knocking and, us all and out. You know me, every horse I bet tends to tends to come up lame anyway. So apologies <laughs> for the connection to the eight uh, nervous witness. So. Uh, uh, race nine, the Somerset handicap. This this I thought was a very interesting race because this is this is going uh, two thousand meters, uh, so ten furlongs. Hey Matt, uh, do do we have any like horses that we know absolutely want to go the two thousand meters in this race? Because uh, 
you said a much nicer word than I would have in saying interesting. I hate this. Right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, this is a uh, yeah, this is tough. You know, I I look at this race and it's it's interesting because you you're getting a bunch of lightly raced horses. I mean, you got a couple, uh, you got a couple that you know only got three starts. Uh, you got another one with only four starts. You got a um, overseas horse coming in, and I gotta tell you, man. I'm gonna lean on this overseas horse because I don't know I don't know about any of these domestic horses. Um, Zach Burton gets on this horse, uh, which obviously intrigues me because I mean he he tends to ride local horses. You don't you don't see him often get get on on some of these uh, you know first time starters in Hong Kong. Um, and, and this is a horse coming in with a couple of wins. Um, you know, he's got a win, a second, and another win. Going going a route distance, going seven, eight furlongs. So it is stretching out in this spot. But I don't think Zach takes the mount if this horse isn't well meant. Um, what's interesting is if you look at Speed Pro, you look at the notes for the works, they, they don't think this is this is a, a first up winner. Um, but I don't know if any of these other horses are uh, are any time up winners uh going this distance i mean it's really you know it, it's it's tough to to kind of see um see the distance uh come through for some of these and, and I, I don't know you know maybe you'll talk a little bit more i don't know if you have um you know more extensive uh, pedigree data on some of these horses but um I, i'm going to lean on this for uh the the uh, massive sovereign and I, I think of the horses that are in here, the six Noble Pursuit probably makes the most sense uh, of the horses that have runs here. And, and you know, I say that right, like this is a horse that's won three of his last four, right? It's not like um, it's not like I'm uh, you know this is some slouch or whatever. But uh, this is the Happy Valley horse, or is won the last two races at Happy Valley. Still hasn't gone the two thousand meters, but at least he's gone eighteen hundred, right? So maybe I don't know. Maybe the plan was to to kind of build up to to go these longer distances. I mean, there are uh, there are some group races at these longer distances that tend to have softer fields um, because you know Hong Kong is very much in buying horses a lot a lot of times from Australia sprinters. You know they like the five furlong, six furlong, seven furlong sprints and mile. Um, and, and so sometimes these stayers, they, they kind of get lost, um, uh, in, in, in here. And, uh, you, you see it oftentimes with, the with the horses, you know, when they ship in, you know, uh, for, for the big, uh, group one races. But, um, yeah, I, I thought maybe Noble, Noble Pursuit was one that maybe they're trying to train up, uh, to, to get that, that longer distance. I mean, if you look at the progression, it was at seven furlongs, eight furlongs, nine furlongs, and, and his one, uh, along the way. Um, you know, Hugh Bowman gets back aboard here and, you know, he's, he's the second best jock in the, in the colony right now. So, um, yeah, I, I think that, I think that the six is probably the horse to beat. And if anybody else is going to win, I'm, I'm going to go with the four. Um, I'll be interested to see what kind of price we get on the four. Um, because these, um, imports don't tend to get bet, uh, as much as they should, I think, but you get Zach aboard on this one. So, uh, maybe maybe that value might be gone here. Yeah, I you know I guess going back to the four, right? I I'm interested to see how much money it does take um, because of Zach, right? Um, you know, you asked about you know you mentioned trials, right? You mentioned kind of those works, and I, I watched a couple of them and saw the data. I mean, the, the trials don't really look like anything. You know, look it up, no, they never. I, I think horse is more of a seven for a long eight for a long horse to me and you know doesn't necessarily want a mile and a quarter I, I, that's just trying to go off some breeding but you know that's that's just sire pedigree so i it, that's two seconds of research i don't know right I, I i tried to fade it but i thought it would i thought the horse would take too much money you know the six that you mentioned you know when i say hey i think a race is an all that kind of just means hey i'm going to try and recommend or at least take prices if i'm putting something through right i might have a ticket like i said literally playing all and i tend not to try and do that um but to me right the six uh, horse wins at happy valley does something different bumping up and has to pick up nine pounds doing it that doesn't scream recipe for success for me so 
I didn't want to take the six. I thought the two would probably take a lot of money simply because Ryan Moore is riding. Like, I don't think he's riding for this race at all. But, oh, <laughs> by the way, you're getting one of the world's best jockeys riding here. So someone is going to bet that, I'm sure. Um, you know, I, I, all that said... To me, then, I'm trying to scratch at some, you know, some unknowns, right? Are there things, are there little edges that I can bet to at least say, yeah, at a bigger price, I would want to take these horses more than those horses that I really don't like at those distances. Three of them kind of stuck out, but I'm not really over the moon about any of them. Uh, the first one I'll recommend, I'd say the 14, 18 carat, right? I'll go back to the tried and true, bet the lowest weight, weight <laughs> but the lowest weight horse at the best draw and see what happens, right? And in this case, I do think that last race, it showed something, right? That was kind of a, you know, average to forward track, um, and it made up ground. And, you know, granted it had a better draw at that, it, it was four pounds lighter, but um, it was wide. And I don't necessarily think that the rail it was running on that day was was necessarily good. Um, you know, it, it didn't, it said, you know, the comments say it didn't have clear run and then made up ground afterward. Maybe that horse is moving forward, right? Maybe it'll relish the extension of distance. Maybe it'll make up some more ground here. Maybe it can position itself better um, than it had at the at the mile distance. So, you know, yeah, that's an unknown, but you're getting low weight. You're getting a decent shock. You're getting, you know, uh, you know, obviously not a great draw in the 10 spot, but willing to take a chance on that one. Um, a couple other ones that I like, the seven, Deviledom, I think. The race two back didn't show too, too much, but I also think that, you know, you know my hatred for Lyle Hewitson and I was still with that <laughs> ugly head. The race two back, you know, Lyle has it on the rail, um, and I don't think the rail was good that day on the B plus two. Granted, it's running B plus two again this time, um, but you know it gets some weight from that, right? It's it's five pounds lower than it was that day. That race came back okay. I think all three races it's run in, those runners are you know they're above eighty rating now, so they're running back in class two. That at least indicates that it's not losing to bad horses. So, again, maybe we haven't seen what that horse can do yet. So maybe that seven has some more in it than you could possibly see um, just on paper. Um, and then finally, the eight, I think, intrepid winner, right? Like, you look last time, obviously, that, you know, that kind of closing stretch, um, it was okay, right? It, it at least showed something. I do think that, you know, you see something like that and... You say, oh, you're, you're looking at a horse making up a lot of ground. I do tend to think at, at, uh, in Hong Kong especially, there's a lot of people that like betting like the sexiest closer, right? Like <laughs> if you have a horse sitting there and you just look at that last fraction and you're like, oh, man, that last fraction looks awesome. I'm going to bet that. Um, and then as the rails come out, they're way out of position and they end up finishing like a much the best third. Maybe that's what happened last time, but it might also happen again. Um, so... Yeah, you know, but I thought enough horses in here. I thought, you know, the two, the four, and the six might take enough money where uh, the eight would still be a play. Um, you know, with a decent draw and about the same weight, and kind of some ability to make up ground, um, kind of running well at the distance last time. So those are the three that I'll, you know, maybe put a little more money through from a ticket side, but that's probably about the lowest confidence I can give uh, in a race that we've, we've kind of talked about so far on the show. So who knows? <laughs> Hey, when uh, when you have low confidence, you tend to be right. So, uh, yeah, usually I guys, send it in. Massively at that. Yeah, Probably send it in on this one. All my uh, locks suck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's uh, let's close it out with a seven furlong sprint here, race ten, the Suffolk handicap. Shout out to Foxhound, uh, Suffolk Downs, uh, and um, yeah, I landed on three horses in this race. Um, you know. Uh, <laughs> My top pick, not going to surprise anybody. Uh, probably more, your most likely win leader, uh, the three super winner, uh, going to be on the rail. And, you know, I think this is, um, you know, I'm kind of taking a page out of your book here. You look at those last two races and they just, they don't look great. But when you look at the last two races, he was out in the parking lot in both those races, out in post 12. And if you look three back, he was in post seven, a more manageable post, and he went wire to wire. Four back, he finished second in the nine post. So I think that this this is the horse that just needs to, you know, if he's able to get a better draw, and here he draws the rail with the speed, I think you're going to definitely see some improvement uh, from this horse, and I think you're going to get a nice price. 
Uh, I mean, the last two times he, you know, he went off at 29 to 1 and 41 to 1. Uh, when he won, he went off around 10 to 1. So, you know, I, I don't see this horse being any shorter uh, than, you know, a 10, 12 to 1. So I think this is going to be a good price. Uh, this is probably like my long shot play of the day. This is my only A uh, in this race. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I love Super Winner here uh, getting the getting the improved draw. Um, Matt, where did you land? Uh, same exact spot you did. I actually don't need to talk about that because you mentioned everything <laughs> I was going to mention on that. So congratulations. <laughs> We've reached singularity on the show. Don't bet this horse because it has no chance now that both of us are on it. Um, yeah, no, same same exact thing. I, I, I love it. It's, uh, you know, this is what happens when you see bad drawn horses. It benefits them two ways, right? You get a better draw this time and you get lower weight because they ran like shit because they had a bad draw last time. Um, when you get a couple bad rolls and then something comes around the other way, you got to bet those horses. So that's fitness three to a T. Yeah. I, I have two other Bs that I I, I want I do want to talk about. Um, the six superb kid is probably uh, you know uh, one of the alternatives here. Um, I think he kind of he he was kind of similar to to a lesser extent I think to the three, where he he drew badly last time out and he just missed. Um, and two back he drew a little bit better and and won obviously at a lower class. Uh, and, and he comes back here with a slightly better draw, uh, going that seven furlongs, uh, and and he he just seems to be a much better horse going the seven furlongs. Um, you know, I think off the two last good efforts, you probably will see a, a reduction in price. Uh, but Karis Karis Teton gets aboard. Um, I I think that this horse makes a ton of sense. Um, you know, especially that he's got the slightly better draw than he did last time out. And then the other horse I did like was the one, uh, Blue Marlin. Uh, you know, one is the favorite, two back going uh, seven furlongs at this same uh, the same trip. Um, and I think this is another one where you kind of see that the last two races he's been he's run a little bit better, um, and he he's gotten that better draw. So this is another one that's, that I think might improve a little bit on the draw. Um, or not necessarily improve, but uh, he, he, he should run back to how he did the last two races. And I think either of those last two races, I mean, put him right in the mix in this spot, um, albeit this probably might be a, a much shorter price than the other one. That's kind of why I have the three as an A. I think the three is, is definitely going to be a, a bit of a price, and I think, um, yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to ride it. Yeah, I... I... I mean, I like I really, really like Blue Marlin as a horse. I think that horse is super consistent, and anytime you get a consistent runner, um, you know, I, I I do like it in the spot here. I looked at the six as well as the eleven. Um, I thought that six might be a little far back. You know, if you look, it's been running on the A course the past three times. Rails are out this time. You know, again, kind of same thing I said last race. People really get you know plussed up about the sexiest closer you can bet making those deep runs and. I just think, you know, it's going to set itself up against too much with the rails a little bit further out than it was last time. So out of those two, I think I prefer the 11, Magnificent 9, right? Zach's aboard that, same sort of thing, right? It's closing but not as deep. Um, can kind of sit midfield. Um, you know, I, I like Blue Marlin better to be in a very similar spot. I think Blue Marlin's a much better horse. But I think I'll use the 11 as Magnificent 9 as a B, probably over the 6, Superb Kid. Um, but yeah, same A's I think as you, the three, and and I had Blue Marlin as an A as well, but you know, same rationale there. So we're very similar. Nice. Did you look at any of the rest of the card? I haven't yet. Um, you know, seeing Ryan Moore here piqued my interest because I was like, oh, he's got to be here for some reason. I, I don't know what though. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure there's a good reason he is here. Um, although. I think it's possibly for some four-year-old race. I think there's a restricted race. Usually they're race seven when they're racing kind of the best on the card. Um, let me see what he's actually running in. Yeah, I don't know if I can find it. but Oh, yeah, here it is. I mean, he might be here for ensued in race seven. So, you know, if Ryan Moore's flying in for something, maybe bet that one. But that was just <laughs> on kind of a kick the tires. Like, why the hell is he here? Yeah, <laughs> it's interesting because – John size. Yeah, you would think maybe if Aiden shipped the horse in or something, right, he would be here, but it's it's a John size horse, so it's uh yeah, it's interesting. 
Gotta I wonder something. if he. I w- Dad, he's I, on vacation. I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> we'll I mean, so. yeah. Uh, I mean, we we did see uh, McDonald here a little bit. Um, I, I know he's been he's been in and out. Uh, I know he's. I think he's like on a trial basis or something, isn't he? Or just riding a couple. Obviously, Hugh Bowman is over here uh, more permanently. Um, so, and then you know we we've had the likes of like. Um, Sylvester D'Souza was here for, you know, a couple seasons, uh, full time, uh, uh, Joe Marrera, obviously. Um, so you, you do get the, the big name jocks to come over and, and stay for a little bit, but yeah, I, I, I saw when you pointed him out on one of the cards, I was like, I've raced it. I was like, oh, uh, that's interesting. And so I, I thought that maybe there was going to be some other big races, but yeah, maybe, maybe he's just, maybe he's just chilling. Maybe he's just being chilling over here for, uh for yeah. a couple of races but yeah i think um yeah race seven i think is their like their four-year-old restricted race so um that's a big one but yeah we'll see right interesting yep. at least if nothing else so cool well that's gonna do it us for here uh on the wrong lead another episode you gotta be shot to enemy uh obviously check out am wager you can uh sign up through them uh, obviously, uh, I think uh, last week when they had their bonus, uh, I, I hit a nice, got that nice 20% bonus on zero dollars. So that paid out very well for me. But uh, yeah, on the wrong lead.com at wrong underscore lead. Uh, I'm Mark apparently at two turns. I never changed that. Uh, but no, really, I'm Josh uh, at Cherry Drank. Matt is at Slow and Steadied. We will catch you guys later. Good luck. <laughs>